Welcome back everyone to the Algebraic Graph Theory Seminar. This week we have Janos Vidali from the University of Ljubljana and he will be talking about uh, computing distance regular graphs in SAGE. Okay, so thank you. Uh, yeah, so before I start, uh, yeah, I should mention that uh, this, uh, this work is uh, is based uh, on some joint work with uh, so with Sasha Jurisic, who was my uh, my uh, PhD supervisor and also also a cursi student uh, years ago, uh, and also I have collaborated with uh, Sasha Gavriluk, and uh, through him through also with uh, Shaw Suda and Jason Williford. So uh, so yeah, so we have all contributed to some of these results that I've been talking about, but. Uh, the focus here uh, that uh, I've been meaning to uh, to do in this talk is uh, so to show how we can use Sage uh, and uh, this Sage DRG package so to compute uh, this regular graph and association scheme parameters. Now I'm sure many of you know Sage is a computer algebra system, so it's it's a uh, it's an open source system. It is as such as an it is an it is an alternative to uh, let's say Mathematica or uh, Maple or Magma, uh, and uh, so it's based on Python. So it's easy to so for uh, programmers to to adapt and uh, and then write packages such as this one, Sage DRG, so to suit uh, one's needs to to perform whatever calculations one one needs. Okay, so let me begin. Uh, okay, so I guess most of people here. Are familiar with association schemes, but let me still give a quick introduction. So they were first def defined uh, so as a theory underlying experimental designs. And uh, so they provide a unified approach to many topics. So we have on one hand combinatorial designs or coding theory, but also as a generalization of groups. And maybe where I'm coming from, so for strongly regular and distance regular graphs, so they provide some algebraic background for studying them. Okay, so some quick examples. So I'm sure we all know what Hamming schemes are. So basically, so we, we have a vertex set, we we'll just call it X. So in our case, so the so some vectors of which the elements over an alphabet uh, with, uh, so with, with n symbols. And we have some relations. So such that each pair of elements is in one given relation. And for example, for Hamming schemes, so this relation I means so that the two vectors differ at precisely I positions. And we can do similar with sets instead of vectors. And we have Johnson schemes. So here below, we we'll see we have, so some more examples of association schemes. Uh, so for example, in this, to on the on the left, so basically, all of them have sixteen vertices as we have uh, drawn here. But for example, so what the relations are so differs in each case. So here in these two cases on the left, one of the relations is so being in the same row or column. Uh, so the other relation is being the same color, and the third relation is being not so. Nothing of this. Of course, one relation is always the identity relation. So R0 always means so that a vertex is all is uh, is uh, in this relation with itself. So and if we do, for example, the same thing on the right, only we actually use the edges for the first relations and, and the same for the second and the third relations before. So we see that we actually have such association schemes. So we'll see the uh, definition a, a bit later. And it turns out that well, they all have the same parameters, although they are non-isomorphic. Okay, so to see the, uh, so the uh, definition, so for such a set of relations and a set of vertices to be an association scheme, we also need to have the so-called intersection numbers. So we have this P, H, I, J. So when we have D, non-identity relations, so this uh, indices A to J, so go from zero to D, and so they count. So for, if we take two vertices in, in relation H, so how many vertices there are in 
so in relations i and j to them. So if, if so, if uh, this uh, constant exists, so they're independent of the choice of h and j of uh, I, uh, of uh, of x and y, then uh, then we have an association scheme. Okay, so what are the problems in the study of association schemes? So, for example, we are given some parameters, and so we, are, we may be interested in whether we can construct an association scheme with such parameters. And if this is the case, so is it uniquely defined, or maybe can we determine all such schemes, or maybe we can prove that no such scheme exists. Now, people have uh, studied this and uh, compiled various lists of feasible parameter sets. So basically meaning that we either know that, that uh, examples do exist or we do not know that they do, they do not exist. Now, mostly for some special cases, for example, for strongly regular and distance regular graphs. Recently also, uh, Jason Williford has compiled a list for, so far for feasible parameters of some Q polynomial association schemes. And this is actually, uh, some of the results are actually based on those lists. So we can use this computer software to, to efficiently compute all of these parameters and check for the existence conditions that appear in the literature, but also to obtain some new information which might be very helpful in constructing new examples of association schemes. Okay, so so uh, yeah. So what what's the algebraic background of all of this? So behind all of this is an algebra called the Boss method algebra. So if we represent our relations as binary matrices, then we take the vector space spanned by these uh, binary matrices. So this is the the Boss method algebra. And since uh, okay, so I have talked about symmetric association schemes. There are also uh, so asymmetric ones, but I, I will not to talk about them today. Uh, so in this case, uh, so this, uh, so all of these uh, matrices commute, so they can be simultaneously uh, diagonalized, and it turns out that there is a second basis consisting of projector matrices to this common eigenspaces of this uh, uh, of this uh, matrices AI corresponding to the relations. And then we can, for example, we can write down the so the uh, so how to uh, how to transform between these two bases. So we gather this uh, uh, this information, these two matrices P, I, J, uh, I mean P and Q. So they're called the eigen matrix and dual eigen matrix. And since uh, we have uh, so these uh, AI matrices are binary matrices, they are closed under the entrywise matrix product. And of course, this means that if we do this entrywise matrix product on the, on the second basis of, of these projectors, so or also called primitive idempotents, then we have some uh, coefficients, q, h, i, j, called crime parameters. And it turns out that they must be non-negative. So for example, if we start with some uh, intersection numbers, and then we can actually compute all of these current parameters from them. If some of them turns out to be negative, then we know that these parameters cannot correspond to an association scheme. So we have non-existence in this case. Okay, so, so let's see some example. Okay, so here I have the uh, parameters for the, the four association schemes that were drawn before. So, so you have all the intersection numbers here. And I can use my, uh, so this uh, uh, package to compute, for example, the crime parameters. So we see that we have given the, uh, we have given the intersection numbers here as a list of lists of lists, basically. And we are then, so we then uh, make this, uh, this object which represent these parameters. And now, we, since we have this, we can compute. So, so the other parameters, for example, here we have gone from from uh, from the intersection numbers to crime parameters. We could also do vice versa. So okay, so in this case, we actually notice that the crime parameters and the intersection numbers coincide. There is some kind of form of duality between them. So in this case, we see that so we call such schemes to be formally self-dual. 
Okay, but mostly when we study schemes, we, are, we want some extra properties. For example, one natural property is, well, suppose that this intersection numbers, so they, that, uh, that they, uh, they uh, satisfy this triangle inequality. So basically a number can only be non-zero when the, the three indices satisfy this triangle inequality. In this case, this scheme is said to be metric. Well, if we make a graph and take the, so the, the first relation as the adjacency relation, then every other relation is just some distance relation in this graph. And such graphs are actually the distance regular graphs. So metric association schemes correspond precisely to distance regular graphs. And uh, it turns out that in this case, we actually do not need all of the intersection numbers to determine all the other parameters, but only a subset of them. So we all usually write them down in this uh, intersection arrays. So considering these numbers B and C. So, uh, so we see that they're actually some of the intersection numbers. But as we have said, there is some kind of duality between intersection numbers and crime parameters. So if this uh, triangle inequality also holds I mean, or actually not also, but it, if, it, if it holds for, uh, so for uh, the crime parameters, then the scheme can, is called co-metric. Uh, and similarly as before, we again need some, uh, some subset of these crime parameters and we can then compute every other uh, parameter of the association scheme just from them. So instead of metric or co-metric, we all also often say p-polynomial or q-polynomial and yeah, and of course, there are also schemes that have both of these properties, but in general, so unlike the, for the people in your case, when we know this, uh, we have this uh, combinatorial uh, so, uh, interpretation as distance regular graphs. Well, it is not clear what, what this Q polynomial property really means combinatorially. Okay, but still this, uh, these schemes are being studied, so, there are some, several are known, so 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 that so we we are always interested can we find more or understand them better. Okay, so let us see some example. So for example, here I have written the intersection array of so which is known to uniquely determine a, a known graph, namely the Sylvester graph. So if I run this, okay, so we see that this seal object will simply represent all of these parameters. And now similar as we have seen before, we can compute the, some of the various parameters. For example, we are interested in the order, so the number of vertices. Now we, we see that the Sylvester graph has 36 vertices. Now we can do a similar for the crime parameters. Now the intersection numbers are, are just counts, so they're clearly non-negative integers. For the crime parameters, we have said that they are non-negative, but they are not necessarily integers. So we see, for example, here is one, uh, so one uh, feasible, uh, feasible parameter set, or actually feasible crime array from uh, Jason Williford's list. And for example, if I so make this uh, this object, and now I want to compute so how many vertices it has. So we see, for example, it has two hundred twenty-five vertices. And as the name that I have chosen for the object. So, and of course, we could also compute so other parameters. So, for example, if I go back, so for my object representing the parameters of the Sylvester graph, I can compute all of the so all of the uh, intersection numbers. So, so this number on the on the left is actually the one that appears uh, in the uh, in the superscript, in the, when we write PHIJ, and then, and then, uh, so the we have uh, so the rows and columns corresponding to the INJ, uh, so to the INJ indices, and we see that we we have these symmetric matrices in these cases. Okay, so we can also compute the crime parameters. So, we, so we see again, we can have non-integral numbers, but always non-negative. Non okay, we can also draw, for example, the distance partition. So if I take one vertex and then look how many vertices are at each distance from them. So 
they're precisely the so the uh, so the the uh, the relations of the association scheme so as you said correspond to distances okay so this only draws how many vertices we have we can also choose two vertices as a given distance for example distance one and now this since we since the intersection numbers are constants then we know that uh, uh, so how many vertices there are at, at the particular distance from uh, from the two vertices that we have chosen, or maybe we can do maybe at distance two, and we we also have this picture. Okay, so what else can we do? Well, we can actually use the fact that the Sage uh, supports uh, uh, so symbolic computation, and we can also do all of this if we have uh, some uh, uh, some some parameters with with some variable so for example here we have uh, an example of a one parametric family of intersection arrays for distance regular graphs so we see that we have this object now we could also do do similar things so for example i want to know how many vertices such a graph would have okay so okay so we have this uh, expression maybe we can then use uh, i can probably Try to simplify it a bit. Okay, I, well, maybe maybe it would help if I try to factor. Okay, so we see that that uh, I can I can tell the software to to do some simplification, and so so I see how many vertices such a graph with this uh, intersection area would have. Okay, for example, I can also do substitution. So I want to substitute. For example, R, R to be one, we have this intersection array, which is known to uniquely determine the Hamming scheme. So a Hamming graph, I can also maybe substitute some other numbers. So for example, R equals two. Okay, I, I have some other intersection array. Uh, now, actually this, uh, this family was known to be feasible, but okay, but we can, we can always check this. So if I run this check feasible uh, method on, the, on this uh, parameters object, it will actually go through all of, no, of, of the known feasibility conditions. And if there is one that uh, it, it is not uh, satisfied, then we will get an error. But if everything is, everything is satisfied, then it will simply return without an error. So clearly we know that this such a graph exists. So clearly this, parameter set is feasible. But for example, if I go with the second member of my family, okay, and we see that we quickly get so an error. And in this case, it reports that it was actually you, Rishit, and myself who proved for this example that it is not feasible. So we know that that, uh, that an, a distance regular graph with the, this uh, intersection area does not exist. Actually, this was proven for the whole family, so that I have uh, written before. So for actually for all values of R at least two, and in this case, so the okay, so it does not match any of the uh, feasibility conditions, any of the generic ones. So, but it does. Uh, so the the package actually keeps a list of, of such uh, uh, families for which uh, infe infeasibility has been shown. And then it simply matches against that list, and uh, and since uh, we have a match, then it uh, reports that this uh, so this uh, uh, intersection array is not feasible. Okay, so what else can we do? So we can use, for example, the triple intersection numbers. So so in the definition of the association schemes we have defined so intersection numbers we have taken two vertices as a given distance and looked at the uh, so how many vertices we have at at some, at some relations now we can do similar with three vertices but we no longer have to guarantee that these numbers will be constant or actually independent of the choice of the vertices we start uh, with but still we can uh, we can set up a system of equations and relate this uh, 
So this triple intersection numbers to the intersection numbers. So we see that we have, so, okay. So when, when on one of this, this HIJ is zero, we have a constant, but otherwise we have a variable. So we have D cubed variables if you have, um, uh, so a, a scheme of D classes and 3D squared. Uh, so uh, equations, and in some cases we can get uh, something useful from this. Now, uh, for example, in the metric cases, we know that many of, of this will be zero due to the tri triangle inequality. But also in the, in the case we have some uh, crime parameters that is zero, we can have uh, an additional equation. This actually can be derived from the proof that uh, the, the crime parameters are non-negative. Uh, and so in these cases, we have new equations and this can give us more information when computing these triple intersection numbers. Okay, so let us see one example. Uh, so here we have, uh, so an intersection array for a bipartite distance regular graph of diameter five. Now, actually, if such a graph existed, we could give a counterexample to a conjecture, but by McLean and Terriger, uh, but we will prove that no such graph exists. Okay, so we define uh, our uh, so our parameters. Now I have done this check feasible, but since uh, since the package also keeps a list a list of uh, so of uh, so of cases that are known not to exist, so I have. I have uh, skipped this check so that uh, it verifies every other feasibility condition and it passes. We know that such a graph would have 3,500 3, vertices. Now, for example, if you compute its crime parameters, okay, let me zoom out a little bit. So, okay, we see that actually you have a lot of zeros. So actually such, such a scheme would also be Q-polynomial and actually also uh, Q-antipodal. So we had you have lots of zero crime parameters, which in turn means that when you compute its, uh, uh, so it's uh, triple intersection numbers, we'll have, uh, so we will have uh, many, uh, many new equations and this will help us. So what we will do, we'll pick three vertices at mutual distance two. Now, if we draw this distance partition, we see that, okay, so for example, for example, we have picked one vertex here, one here, and one here. We have we see that we have. So if we fix the first two, we have two hundred and forty-three choices for the for the third one. And now we'll we'll compute this three print section numbers. Actually, it turns out that what we will get is uh, is still an underdetermined system of equations, but we will only need one parameter, and we'll set it to this. This uh, parameter alpha will represent so the number of common neighbors of all of these three vertices, three vertices that we have chosen. Okay, I will not show the complete solution, but only two of these numbers. So the number of common vertices in here. So is alpha as we have said, but the number of vertices at distance five from all of them turns out to be minus twelve alpha plus twenty. Now alpha clearly must be a non-negative integer and so must, so must this uh, quantity. So we see that the only possible values of alpha are zero and one. But this allows us to, uh, to do some double counting. So as we have said, so we have chosen two vertices here and here. And so we have, uh, and let us define, so the set A to be the set of the common vertices and the set B to be, so the set of vertices at distance two from both of them. And we know that since every, so every vertex in A is adjacent to, to this uh, X and Y, so the one, the two vertices that we have fixed, and we see that every other of its neighbors must lie in the set, in the set B. So the valency was 55. So we have five vertices, which it, each of them with 53 edges. 
to the, to the set B. So we have a total of 265 edges, but we have seen on the other hand that however we have chosen a, a vertex from B, it can have at most one neighboring alpha in the, in the set A. So we have at most 243 edges. And of course, this is a contradiction from which we then uh, uh, conclude that that a graph with such parameters does not exist. So, so we see, so for example, one, one example how we can do this. So we have used uh, so this, uh, our package to compute the uh, intersection numbers and then so did some, some more uh, reasoning to, to derive non-existence. So and we have such a result. Okay, so what else can we do? Uh, we can also do some double counting with this uh, triple intersection numbers. So as we have said, so they're not necessarily constant. So maybe if we pick so two vertices at a given, so the given relation, and then pick two more vertices at given relations from these two vertices X and Y, but also at the given, so, but also at some relations in between them. And if we use the alphas to, to, uh, to denote the possible values of, of this strip in section numbers, the beta of the, of the other one, we see that we have X and Y in both. And then we add the, so one of the remaining two vertices. Uh, okay, and of course we can do such a double counting. So this, the alphas are the possible values for one of the triple section numbers, the betas for the other one. And they also have, so how many time, how many times each of them occurs? Of course, this might not be known in advance, but we can set up such an equation and maybe we can get something from, from this. So for example, actually the proof that we had was really one, uh, one uh, example of such, of such a double counting, which led us to a contradiction, but we can have a simple special case. For example, if one of uh, the, so it, if it turns out that one of these triple intersection numbers is known to be zero, well, since the, these are all non-negative numbers, clearly the, one, the other one must also be necessarily be zero. So, we can use this, so we can actually use this to prove non-existence for some uh, three-class Q polynomial schemes. So for example, this is actually the one that we have, uh, so we have uh, used before for the example, so on 225 vertices. Now, okay, I will just run this, uh, this method which will, which will actually perform this check and it, it runs. And, so until it either finds a contradiction or, 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 or concludes that it cannot find one. So in this case, we have found a contradiction. So, uh, so we see, for example, okay, so these are the, the distances are actually the, the relations. So for, for which, so for which this, uh, that uh, double counting failed. So in this case, we can then conclude that such a scheme does not exist. So, okay. So in this case, what, what was going on? So in the background, so, uh, okay. So we have, uh, so the, this package has uh, computed all these, all of these triple intersection numbers. So actually, so the, ge the general solutions and then used integer linear programming to find, so particular, uh, to find particular uh, integral solutions. And it uses that double counting argument to eliminate an inconsistent solutions. And it turns out that after doing this, uh, it found that, uh, so it has found that uh, so far, for a certain choice of uh, vertices, there are no more solutions. And so that's why such a scheme cannot exist. Okay. so. So we can use similar techniques to, to prove non-existence of, uh, so, for, so for more distance regular graphs. So we have some more intersection arrays here, but also, so for many Q polynomial association schemes. So I have said, Jason Williford has, uh, uh, so has compiled a list of feasible parameters for, so for three, four and five class 
association schemes. And so I have uh, run this, uh, this method, and actually this uh, algorithm, so through all of them. And so it has, has found many cases when uh, we have obtained the contradiction. Actually, in most cases, uh, it was simply the fact that the, uh, the system of equations, so for some triple intersection number, had no integral solutions. But actually, in two cases, so the one, one of, so in one of the, the two we have seen uh, before, so it was actually necessary to employ this double counting technique to, to then uh, uh, conclude such a contradiction and, uh, and then uh, see that the given parameters cannot correspond to, to an association scheme. OK. So yeah, we can actually also generalize some of the uh, some of the results we have obtained to some infinite families. So we have here, for example, one two-parametric family of distance regular graphs. Actually, it is not wholly feasible, but we can find so two feasible so uh, subfamilies, and so we can then use this technique to to show that no graph with such uh, intersection area can exist, but so for the Q polynomial schemes, so we have actually found three infinite uh, families. So, okay, actually it turns out, so, so they are infinite, but for example, here we require these parameters to be, so these uh, variables to be odd. So for example, in this case, we require R to be three modulo four. Actually, when this, uh, the conditions are, are not uh, satisfied, there are actually, examples known for, for in these families so so yeah but but this actually then this uh, such a uh, so, so such an argument then rules out so this author three modular four cases and now this uh, last case is a uh, so we have uh, obtained uh, so the uh, uh, so the non-existence for a family of Q antipodal, antipodal Q polynomial association schemes. Okay, so I see it here that I, okay, that's probably this is not, okay, I'm not sure. I should check that if I have, uh, I have copied this correctly, but in any case, uh, so we have, uh, so we have uh, such a, such a, a family that we have proven non-existence. And actually, actually, as a corollary of this, we have uh, managed to, uh, to basically complete the classification of tight phone designs in Hamming association schemes. There was a uh, result by Noda from the 70s, uh, which, uh, which, uh, so, which uh, left open the existence of tight four designs in such chemistry schemes. And so this results, this result actually then uh, proves that such, uh, such association, such uh, tight four designs do not exist. So, and then only, only two tight, tight four designs in so chemistry schemes actually do exist. So this is the then complete classification. Okay, so so far, so this is what we have obtained by using, using the triple intersection numbers. But then uh, uh, support has also been added uh, for some more techniques. So in in this uh, Sage DRG uh, package, so one is the technique used by Kodalen and Martin um, to so they also proved non-existence for many of the Q polynomial association schemes. So from Winifred's lists, so they actually, so there are actually some overlap with, with our results, uh, but they use a completely different technique, namely the Schoenberg's, Schoenberg's theorem, which, which uh, tells, uh, so when a polynomial, so is positive definite, so on a, so on a unit sphere, uh, so in this case, positive definiteness means that when applying this polynomial enterprise on the, on the positive semi-definite matrix, so the result is again a positive semi-definite matrix. And it turns out that that uh, some orthogonal some polynomials, namely the Gegenbauer polynomials, uh, so actually 
the base the base is here so they have used this uh, so this uh, again bar polynomials on so on the crime parameters so this uh, li star matrices are actually the matrices of crime parameters and so this uh, theorem says that actually then if if we do this then we, we should expect to, to obtain so a positive so actually a non-negative linear combination of this uh, crime parameter matrices and if if we find an example when this is not the case then we can conclude non-existence so for example here here is one uh, uh, parameter set so one crime array so for which we get this so we would have in this case uh, q bipartite, q bipartite uh, q polynomial association scheme with 594 vertices so but if i run this check schoenberg method it will actually perform this check so they have also uh, determined so up to so up to what uh, so yeah so what, what actually must be done and so following their method we see for example that this uh, so the, this uh, parameter set does not correspond to to, a, to an association scheme so we have non-existence in this case okay so what else can we do so furthermore we can also compute the terwilliger polynomials for q polynomial distance regular graphs or actually so i think i said these are the schemes that are both p and q polynomial and so what is this so terwilliger has observed that there exists such a polynomial of degree four whose coefficients can be expressed in terms of the intersection numbers and actually so the non-principal eigenvalues of the local graph of, of the of a vertex of, uh, of this graph gamma so must have non-negative uh, value so at the so it so the Rydiger polynomial must have non-negative value so at each non-principal eigenvalue of this local graph and we can use say grg to compute this polynomial so for example here we have one intersection array okay so it would be a graph with 750 vertices it's also q polynomial we could also use the software to check this and okay so let us so compute what is the degree that polynomial is so we see here so it is a polynomial of degree four and okay so let us compute now its roots so sorted by uh, so so from the smallest to the largest okay maybe we can also draw this so to see so how this looks like so it's a degree four polynomial so clearly so we could have so this it tells us that we could have uh, the uh, so the uh, non-principal eigenvalues of the local graph so either here or here so we have these two intervals which are uh, which are allowed for this uh, non-principal eigenvalue of the local graph okay but actually we have another result another known result to uh, which also restricts this uh, so where these uh, eigenvalues can lie so it's in bcn so we can compute so the lower and upper bound so for this non-principal eigenvalues and okay let me just draw this so this is just uh, marked here by this red line but of course so together with the uh, together with the Turing polynomial we see that we can all, only have eigenvalues so here and also here so this is actually plus three so which was one of the roots of the uh, of the polynomial so so yeah so we have some if, some extra information that we can then use when uh, when reasoning about the about the graph so so we see that okay all of the non integral eigenvalues must lie on this interval between minus four and minus one and since this is a pretty short interval so what what we know about uh, okay we know that graph eigenvalues are algebraic integers and and we know that uh, they must so if uh, 
if we have a, a non-integral eigenvalue, then all of its algebraic conjugates must also appear as eigenvalues. And we can actually use some results to, to prove that since we have such a, a narrow interval here, we can actually rule out the existence of any non-integral eigenvalues. So we can also we can only have so three minus two or minus three as the eigenvalue of the local graph of, of the graph that we have started with. Plus, of course, the valences of the principal eigenvalue. Okay. Um, okay, so once we have all of this, we can set up a system of equations to determine the multiplicities. So we know that the sum of the multiplicities is uh, the number of vertices. So we have also here the one, which is the multiplicity of the principal eigenvalue. Then if we sum all of the, all the eigenvalues, we have the trace of the, uh, so of the uh, adjacency matrix is of course zero. And if we square the adjacency matrix, then of course its eigenvalues are the squares of the eigenvalues of the original matrix. And what we, and its trace is, so the number of vertices times the valency. So of course this, this is all, uh, expressed in terms of the parameters of the original graph. So we have three, three equations with three variables. We can solve this system of equations. Okay, we see that we would need to have non-integral non -integral multiplicities, which is of course not possible. So, so clearly we see that such this local graph of this graph cannot exist and also the graph itself will not exist. So we conclude non-existence and we can do similar. So for two more examples. Um, okay, now we have done this for some, uh, so more systematically for the distance angle graphs with classical parameters. Uh, so we know that most, most families of distance angle graphs, so can be actually, uh, so can actually be uh, parameterized in terms of just four parameters, which are called these classical parameters. But so many, so many of these uh, parameter sets are still feasible. And in this case, we have managed to rule out many of them. So mostly with this parameter B equal to two, since similarly as before, this narrows down. So the, the, the interval in which the, uh, so in, in which the, any non-integral eigenvalues of the local graph might lie. So, so that then we can use a, a similar technique as before. And we see that we have uh, some non, so some non-existence results. Okay, so here are some, some sporadic examples, but in many cases we have when alpha is one, then, and uh, beta is uh, so small enough, then, this technique will, uh, we can use this technique to, to rule out so ma many examples. So, so this simply means that in all of these cases, so that, uh, so we, we obtain, so a small number of possible local eigenvalues. And in you know, each of these cases, it turns out that the, the system of equations, uh, so for determining the multiplicities does not have an integral solution. So we have here also one, uh, so actually two infinite families. So actually for this first one, this was already, so the non-existence was already known as a part of another family, which turns out to be of, of tight graphs. But then this family when beta equals two to the D minus four. So for, for each diameter, at least three. So this is actually a new, uh, so a new result. Okay, now what else can we do? Uh, Okay, so even if, if this such a, such a system of equations that does have an integral solution, then, then maybe in some cases it will tell, so it will tell us more about these local graphs. So for example, if it turns out that these local graphs have at most four eigenvalues, then we can use a result by Van Damme, uh, which tells us that in this case, such a graph must be walk regular, and we can compute the number of closed walks through each vertex in terms of the of the spectrum. Uh, okay, and of course we also know that 
so this must be so this is a count so this is a, a, an integer also when r is odd so the each, each walk is really close is uh, counted twice so once in every direction so this number one must be even so so actually we have considered this graphs this graph with classical parameters so with b equals two alpha equals one and so we have determined so in, in which case so they have at most four eigenvalues. Actually, the case with at most three eigenvalues was actually done before, but before by Gavrilyuk and Colin, and they actually used this to uh, to uh, characterize such graphs as the bilinear forms graphs. But there are also cases when we have precisely four distinct eigenvalues, and we have then a divisibility condition here. But then it turns out that we can only have so one uh, possibility for the, the value of, of beta. So uh, so for each uh, choice of the diameter. So so that uh, uh, so since otherwise this number of of walks must be non-integral, and this then allows us to so to uh, to prove more non-existences. So for example, we have some examples here. So Okay, so we have only gone up to diameter eight. We could, all, of course, do more, but from these uh, results, so we can conclude then the non existence of this family when beta equals two to the d minus three. Okay, so yeah, so this is all from my side. So if anyone wants to ask anything, so I, I can also show maybe some computation, anything would like, anyone would like to. Uh, to see, feel free to do so. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? I have a question. Yeah. Um, so Chi Wen Wang has some old papers about uh, uh, Q polynomial DRGs of negative type. So this means the Q is negative, or the base, the the uh, you know, it, yeah, negative. Um, have you? And there was there was one infinite family of. Uh, intersection numbers, parameter arrays, that um, he was not able to rule out the existence or non-existence. Mm -hmm. uh, have you looked at that case? It was a very interesting case. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I have seen uh, the, the paper, and uh, but uh, I, I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe I should look again to see, to see whether I can use uh, any of these techniques to rule it out. Uh, but but yeah, it, if I recall correctly, yeah, it, it is some something that <laughs> it seems that should be able to rule out. But actually, I believe that uh, uh, that particularly. So, for example, uh, okay, maybe maybe I should I should uh, do this example here. So, with the Whittaker polynomial. So I, I can simply compute. Uh, oh, so let me just uh, okay. Let me just add some something here so that we can quickly compute. Okay. So so for example, if you want to use so what? Uh, okay. So I, what I had here, for example, was something like. Uh, Okay, so diameter, for example, four. So I'll just use one, one of the examples uh, for which I have the non-existence. And okay, so B was two, alpha was one, and for example, beta, let's say just 12. So one of the examples here. And so let us just compute it. So, So the Tewilger polynomial. Okay, so yeah, so actually what happens here in this, 
So in this uh, uh, in this case, so okay, let me just factor it so that we can quickly see the the roots. So you see, so here we when we have so B is two. So actually, I believe this is all. So this was done actually by Gabriel Luke and Kuhlen. So they have uh, computed the so in general the the Rüdiger polynomial for the graphs with classical parameters. So what we get is that so one of the one of the uh, zeros is minus one, and the other one is minus b minus one. So if we, for example, if I just draw this, okay, so. I just draw this plot. Okay, so we have such a polynomial. Now, if we try to do something with the with negative b, so I don't know. Okay, so I should probably look at some. Okay, so what uh, what would be a, a feasible so feasible uh, set of parameters? Maybe if anyone knows anyone by heart, so that they can uh, provide. Um, okay. I don't, so I'd have to look it up. I don't. Yeah, 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 sure, sure. So let me just. Um, I think. Something like minus two. Okay. okay. Um, okay, so let me just. There's one in the chat now from John. Uh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, sorry. Okay, thank you. So, okay, so let me just use this for example. Okay, so, okay, so we'll use, okay, B to be minus two and alpha to be, okay, so this is minus three over two. And beta will be then, okay, so this is three. So this is what, minus eight, minus seven, so seven over half I have. Um, I don't know if I have beta this correctly. So, okay, so beta is minus two, minus two, minus two. Oh, okay, I should. Okay, no. Okay, so uh, let me see why doesn't it work. Uh, oh, B must be a not prime, oh, thank you. Uh, so actually, okay, minus B is a power of not prime. Okay, so we need to use what? Okay, so let's say minus three. Okay, so then. Okay, so minus three, then minus two. And so we need to have minus three. So minus 27, this is 26, okay, 13. Okay, so let us see how the polynomial looks in this case. Okay, so we see that actually, yeah, it looks very different. So, 
Oh, okay, I should probably extend so. Okay, so. So yeah, okay, so this is, so, so possibly, I believe maybe in this case, uh, something could be done since uh, this, this interval here is still pretty narrow. And I believe so, even if we have uh, an interval of, uh, of length three, then we can still use that, uh, uh, we can still use, the, so this uh, condition to, uh, to maybe rule out something. So let's say if, let's see if, okay, so, okay, if I just check feasibility. Okay, so it turns out that maybe it cannot derive a contradiction right away, but maybe maybe there could be, could be something that uh, could be used in this case uh, to to, to maybe reason uh, in some other way, so some, something that is not still uh, yet uh, so uh, written as, down as a program, so not not yet done generically, but yeah, maybe maybe, maybe something could be done. So it's it certainly certainly this deserves uh, another look. Uh, so that uh, so how how we can use this? Yeah, anyway, it's a, a very interesting case. Yeah. 